G'day everyone, Michael Taylor at 64 Motorsport and today I'm back working on the X5. So if you haven't caught up with my last video, in that video I got all the rear suspension sorted out but before I could do the front suspension I'd come across an additional problem which was in relation to the rubber boots on the output shafts and the rubber boots on those had cracked and let all the grease out. It's a fair dinkum mess up there. I got parts ordered and they've arrived so now I'm going to tackle the front and really all I originally wanted to do was just replace the front shockies but now that I've come across this other problem I've got to address that as well. I've already got the right hand side out and started to clean things up and prep things up ready to put in the new rubber boots but in this video I'm going to work on the left hand side and it's a fair bit of work and it's not very pleasant because everything's just covered in grease so there's a lot of cleanup that needs to be done before I can even sort of get to anything. So let's go down and have a squiz and see where we're at and how we're going to tackle this. Okay, we're down at the right hand side and as I say I've already got all this, this unassembled or disassembled, <laughs> unassembled, what sort of words they are. I'll get the camera underneath here and you can have a bit of a squeeze. Well, there's the brake caliper hanging up on an Oki strap. Um, but I've already started cleaning it up but there's still a heap of grease on it. It's just, um, it's just from touching the, the back of it. Look at the gaping big hole there so that's all the grease that's sort of come out from there but I've left the tie rods on so I don't have to do too much work on the wheel alignment and I've given it a bit of a just a sort of basic sort of clean down with some degreaser try and get as much oil and grease out as I can so let's have a look at the other side and what we've got to do to get this thing sorted yeah look at all the grease it's just stuck everything it's a real nightmare all this gear has got to come out before I can even think about doing it so all these tie rods and uh, control arms need to be disconnected yeah so all those control arms and the tie rods need to be need to be disconnected from that um, dry flange hub assembly and then that's got to all come off and um, then I can get to work replacing those boots and then everything's got to be reassembled. I've got to rip the, uh, the spring shocky assembly out and replace the shockies and then put those back in. So there's a fair bit of work to be done and um, it's a little increase as I say. So I guess you could say that's the easy part. So I've got all the brake assembly off, so it's the brake caliper and the caliper supporting bracket and the wheel hub. One of the things I'd learnt from doing the other side was to loosen off the locking nut for the wheel hub before you start taking all the brakes off because that way you can sort of get a bar in between the caliper and the vanes on the brake rotor to help get a bit of leverage to get that nut off because it's on really tight and if you're trying to do it with the hub just freewheeling it's almost impossible so that's a uh, sacrificial part so if you remove that you're going to have to replace it they're only about three dollars so it's not really an issue but just make sure you order one before you start so now what i got to do is clean up a heap of the grease around those uh, tie rods and the ball joints and uh, start disassembling that So it's the next day and I've got everything disassembled except for the drive shafts so I've just got to pull those out. So I've been busy cleaning up all the parts and down here I've got my crock pot. Oh, still 
everything up. That's better. So I've got my crock pot and I've got all the nuts and bolts in there, getting those cleaned up. And then down there is all the bits and pieces that I've got cleaned up. But I've got two problems. This E53 keeps throwing up hurdles at me. And I'm starting to get over it. I'm really developing a love-hate relationship with this car at the moment. So let's have a look. This is the main carrier assembly and you can see the bearings pretty much stuffed. This is the hub assembly and that's the other half of the bearing. Sort of, you can see bits of plastic. So the bearings on both sides are pretty much stuffed. So I'm gonna need two new bearings. I'll get those drive shafts out, uh, start getting the boots changed over, get the new shockies put in, get some parts ordered and probably another few days delay. Anyway, that's the way it goes. So those wheel bearings haven't arrived as yet and that's really disappointing because it means I'm held up in terms of getting that front end finished. But what I'll do is I'll take advantage of that time and get things like the brake calipers and the brackets cleaned up and freshened up with a coat of paint just to sort of finish off the look underneath the car. So I've got the rear suspension all finished. Apart from the wheel bearings, the front suspension will be finished. I'm thinking maybe only another couple of hours work on there. I guess just depending on how long it takes to press those bearings in. But anyway, <laughs> um, these ongoing maintenance issues, which I'm having to address, which I wasn't really counting on at the beginning, like, you know, the wheel bearings and the oil cooler, are really starting to chew into my budget to the tune of about $750. So I'm going to have to look at ways to claw some of that cost back because I've got to be really mindful of how much I spend on this build because there's a ceiling for how much these X5s are worth and if I spend too much on it then I'll never recoup that cost when I go to sell it. There's a bit of work to be done in the back office I guess you could say to ensure this all happens. I'm really starting to develop this love-hate relationship with the X5. Anyway, it's the way it goes working on cars, you know. So if you'd like to see more content on my X5 build, or perhaps my supercharged E46 325Ci, then consider subscribing, but don't forget to hit that notification bell, so that you'll get a notification every time I upload a new video. Also, you can do me a solid by clicking that like button, because it really helps my channel when you do. But until we meet again, look after yourselves, stay safe, and TTFN.